Do you want to join the ranks of elite healthcare professionals who ensure every surgical instrument is spot on? The sterile processing certification is your ticket, but test day can be nerve wracking if you don't know what to expect. Let's fix that. Hey professionals, I'm Brandon, and this is the Sterile Guy YouTube channel, your go-to for all things sterile processing. If you're preparing for the CRCST exam, leave a comment letting me know how prepared you think you are. Now let me guide you through test day so you walk in confident and ready. First off, what is HSPA and CBSPD? Well, HSPA stands for Healthcare Sterile Processing Association, formerly known as ISHM, I-A-H-C-S-M-M. It is a professional certification body for sterile processing techs with over 48,000 members worldwide. The other testing agency option is known as CBSPD, the Certification Board for Sterile Processing and Distribution. But in this video, I'm going to break down testing for the CRCST through HSPA because it is more straightforward. Plus, depending on your goals, it might cost you quite a bit less in the long run. If you want to know more about the difference between the two, you can check out this video. Okay, another great question. What is the CRCST certification? The CRCST stands for Certified Registered Central Service Technician. It's the foundational certification for sterile tech pros from HSPA. Earning it shows you're qualified in decontamination, sterilization, packaging, quality assurance, and patient safety. Basically, it says you're an all around qualified technician. And lastly, why does it matter? Well, it demonstrates professionalism, patient safety practice, technical know-how, and yes, a serious dose of self-pride. When you pass that exam, you feel pretty dang good. I'm going to cover a lot of stuff here, but if you want deeper details or just want to read everything for yourself, then check out the HSPA certification handbook and the CRCST exam content outline on the HSPA website, and I'll link both of those below. Also, check out the Sterile Processing Technical Manual 9th Edition, which is literally the Bible for CRCST certification. I will have that link below as well. To sit for this certification exam, you need to submit an application through HSPA. Now, if you've logged 400 hours in the past five years of clinical hands-on experience that can be signed off by a sterile processing supervisor of some kind, then you'll be applying for the full CRCST. If you do not have the hours and you still want to pursue the CRCST certification anyways, you'll be going for the provisional CRCST. To learn more about the differences in these, click this video. As soon as you pass, you get your certification, whether it is full or provisional. Now let's talk timeline. Once HSPA approves your application, you'll get a confirmation with an eligibility ID, usually by email or by snail mail if you chose to apply that way. Then you have 120 days to schedule your exam through ProMetric using that eligibility ID. So don't procrastinate and lose your money. Within that email, you will not only have your ProMetric ID, but it will also be full of instructions on how to apply with ProMetric with the navigating links as well. ProMetric is a testing service agency that HSPA uses, and that is basically the majority of what they do, testing. They provide excellent testing centers for certifying organizations and even schools to allow remote testing while retaining the security of the organization's copyrighted information, as well as maintain the integrity of the tests and certifications. Once you're logged in, Prometrics portal lets you select a test center by your geographic location, also by the date you want to test, and finally, the time of day you want. Just don't wait until the last minute. The longer you wait to schedule your exam, the less open slots and conveniently timed slots that you'll see. Be proactive and set a date. Setting a date usually increases the anxiety and motivation to study anyways, so you might as well do it. But I always recommend picking a date six weeks out or more to make sure you have ample time to study. Now let's get to the nitty gritty of this video. Test day. The first thing I wanna talk about is arrive early. You will wanna arrive at least 30 minutes before your slot or you risk forfeiting that slot in the event you can't find the correct place to check in. 
Prometric has an entire check-in process that takes time, and there may be several others waiting to check in as well. The check-in is a two-part process. Second, you're gonna secure your stuff first. You'll let the front desk know you've arrived and they will check your ID and mark you as present. They will have you read over some rules and provide you with a locker key. All personal items go into the locker. This means phones, smartwatches, pens, highlighters, or any other personal things that are not allowed in the testing area. Next, ID and check-in. The second part of the check-in process, you'll again present your photo ID. And yes, they will carefully check your photo ID. This process is much more intense to ensure the integrity of the certification test, privacy, and security. They will most likely wand you, checking for other hidden material or unauthorized items on your person, and they'll take your picture, which is only for identification purposes and kept protected as part of the testing record. Oftentimes, if you are wearing long sleeves, they will ask you to pull them up or even remove them so they can check your arms for writing. Okay, let's move to layout or the physical design. You'll be seated in a cubicle with a desktop that has scratch paper, a pencil, a keyboard, a mouse, and optional noise reducing headphones. And that is usually it. This will be a cubicle in a large room with lots of other cubicles separated by partitions on the desktop. Here's a pro tip for you. Most people don't use that scratch paper, but I do. This is a great place to keep track of the questions you weren't certain about so you remember which ones to come back to at the end before you submit the test. I not only write the question number, but I write a word or two about what the question was about so I remember. You might get another question that provides the answer to that flagged question. And every correct answer matters to ensure you pass. Let's discuss monitoring. The testing sessions are video and audio monitored and recorded, and the proctors are usually periodically walking around. So please do not try to be sneaky or cheat. They've seen it all and are prepared to deal with it. And if you get kicked out for cheating, say goodbye to getting certified. Next, let's talk about the practice exam. Yes, practice exam. Once logged into your test, you'll first go through a tutorial which will walk through how to navigate the test, flag questions, select and unselect questions, move forwards and backwards in the test, and of course submit when complete. After that, it usually gives you an option to do a mini practice exam to get familiar with navigating the software. If you haven't done a computerized test before, definitely do this. It doesn't count in the time allotment, so you're good to go. There will be a warning screen asking if you want to start the test and the timer, so you'll know when it's time to start. Now you get three hours for 150 multiple choice questions. This is 125 questions that are scored, and then 25 are known as pre-test questions that do not count. And I don't like the term pre-test because it makes it sound like the first 25 questions of the test don't count. But actually, those 25 non-scored questions are scattered throughout the entire test, and you will not know which is which. It's kind of sneaky. The average completion time for the exam is usually somewhere around 90 or less minutes. But if you take longer, don't sweat it. If you need a break, raise your hand or signal however they told you to. However, keep in mind your clock keeps ticking while you're out on break, so make it brief. You also usually cannot leave the building during that time. When you feel satisfied with all your answers and you're ready to submit the test, you can go ahead and complete the test. After submission, you'll immediately get a pass-fail result. When I say immediately, sometimes you'll get it like a little quick survey before it, but usually you'll get it within a couple pages. And this is great to not have to wait in anxiety for days or weeks. Now, unfortunately, if you fail, you must wait six weeks before retesting. So make sure you're ready the first time around. Six weeks is a long time to wait after failing the first time. I strongly recommend my Sterile Processing 101 certification prep course, the Sterile Processing flashcards, and my Sterile Processing practice exams. They've helped thousands of technicians pass on their very first try. I have also bundled all these into an incredibly discounted bundle called the Legendary Bundle. Don't pass on this monster of a deal. 
Before we close out this video, let's go over a few tips to make sure you're successful on test day. Dress comfortably. You'll wanna dress in layers in case it's chilly. Sometimes those rooms are freezing and that can distract you from the test or make you wanna finish the test faster so you can get out of there. And that might not play into your favor if you're not reading those questions carefully. Don't pass on the scratch paper method to remember where you need to return later in the test for review. Leave yourself notes of the question number and what the question was about. Breathe. Why is it when everything is crazy and anxious and overstimulating, we forget to breathe? Slow your breaths. Deep inhales, long, slow exhales. That helps to lower your heart rate and get you back to center. And one more thing about breath. The lungs are designed to expand vertically, not horizontally. When we're anxious, we usually hunch over and chest breathe, but you need to open up your torso and sit up straight. Allow room for your diaphragm to move up and down with less pressure. Now, if you're ready to apply, check out my application walkthrough video that I've also linked below. And don't miss the provisional verse full CRCST video if you're still working toward your hours. Good luck on test day, and I hope to see you in the certified world soon. Like, subscribe, and as always, I will catch you in the next one.